So welcome everybody to the Nadex application and strategy webinar series. My name is John Skelton with apexinvesting.com and this webinar is brought to you today by Nadex and we're going to spend a little time today talking to you about how to trade out of the money binary options with Nadex. So, um, you know, if you've been with us on some of our past webinars, we've gone over many different uh, subjects about binaries and different types of binaries and different ways to use them. And um, if you've missed any of those, I'm going to show you here in just a quick second where you can go back and watch some of those to uh, get caught up here with us. So as always, let's knock out our disclosure so we can get rolling. Trading futures options or any financial instrument involves risk, may not be suitable for every investor. Uh, any decisions that you make are your sole responsibility. Information here is for informational and educational purposes only, and uh, past performance not indicative of future results. If you're brand new to Nadex, hop on over and visit the Nadex platform here. And you've got a lot of great information here on the Nadex platform. Um, Nadex basically offers two different products. They offer binary options and spreads. You can go right here to each one of these tabs and you can get some great information on each of those products. But as far as webinars, once, one thing I really got to give Nadex a lot of credit for is all the free tools and free education that they provide for you. Uh, if you go right here to the Learning Center, if you click right here on webinars, this will show you any upcoming webinars here in the future. Uh, that way you can you know, click right there, get signed up for those webinars and uh, get registered for them. You'll get some reminder emails about them. But right here, if you go to Webinar Archive, and right here under Filter by Presenter, if you scroll down and you find us right here, Apex Investing Institute, uh, you can go back and catch up on any webinars you might have missed, all right? In these webinars, I mean, you can scroll back and you go back a couple pages. You know, you've got everything from the very basics of Binaries 101, Nadex Spreads 101. You know, if you're brand new, this is kind of, take you by the hand and hold your hand and walk you through the basics, get you familiar with it. we we'll go through different ways of how to trade them, how to trade raid bound markets, how to trade news events in the money binaries. What are the different types of binaries? All kind of great free education and information there for you. Okay. Uh, another thing I want to bring your attention to, if you go right here to trading platforms, um, you know, you can go direct to the, um, you know, apex, um, Right here, you can get the Apex Investing, you know, pre-recorded webinars and all that information. But right here on the trading platforms, you can go straight to the Nadex platform. Nadex also has a great um, mobile app. But you go right here to Demo Trading Platform, okay? And you can go through here and get signed up for a free demo account. Nadex will give you a $25,000 demo account, and uh, you can get signed up for that. Just enter some quick information, hit you know, get free demo account. In just a few moments, you'll get an email with a username and a temporary password, and you'll be able to log right into a demo account. All right, demo account's a great place to get familiar with Nadex, get familiar with the different products they offer, get familiar with how to, you know, open tickets and enter orders, and to try any new strategies or systems you have, and to try that in demo, okay? Not, you know, not to be testing out something new with your real live money. You know what I mean? To be testing out in demo, master it in demo. Once you get it down in demo, then, you know, you can go through and switch over to live from there and so on. So make sure to take advantage of all of those great things there that Nadex has to offer. Okay. All right. So if you're not familiar exactly with what is an in the money binary, we're going to be talking about those today here. And again, what these webinars are for is you know, Nadex offers this free education and does these webinars to give you free education on, you know, what they are and who they are, what they have to offer, how you can utilize the Nadex products in your own trading. And like I said, my name is John Skelton. I'm with Apex Investing. Apex and Nadex, two complete separate companies. Nadex is an exchange. Apex, we're an online company of traders helping traders. We've got over 20,000 members. We've got strategies and systems, but we're traders just like you. We trade Nadex binaries and spreads every day. Uh, I've been with Apex now for about three years as head of operations and have a background as a in banking and as a stockbroker. And I trade Nadex binaries and spreads as well. We love them. And we're just here to kind of show you some different ways and different ideas of how you 
can take advantage of the different CapRisk products with Nadex. So let's jump in here and let's talk about out of the money binaries. What is an out of the money binaries? We're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons, when to trade them, when not to, and touch briefly on some strategies here. So I'm gonna kind of breeze through a lot of these really quick, kind of do a jet tour for you and uh, show you where you can get some more information about them um, if you wanna dive in a little deeper. But let's pull up the Nadex platform here real quick. Let's hop over to Indice Binaries. Let's go to US Tech 100. And right now, let's just go ahead and pull these up right here. So when you pull up, this is what we call the Nadex Binary Strike Ladder, okay? And you've got all these different binary strikes here, okay? And different prices. And most of you know what an out of the money binary is. If not, you can kind of go back and catch up through some of those videos, but I'll just do a real quick overview here for you, for those of you that might be brand new. You've got all these different strikes here, okay? And you notice 59.82, 78, 74, you know, they're four points wide each. And over here, you've got the offer side. This is the price you can buy them for. This is the bid side, the price you can sell one for. And you see the prices right here range from, you know, $7, 10, 50, 6, you know, 90. Well, we all know that a binary at expiration is worth either zero or 100 at expiration. And you can, you know, the amount that you risk is the amount that you, on the buy side, is the amount that you put up to buy the binary. You know, the amount of reward is if you hold it to expiration and it expires profitable, well, it expires worth $100 minus whatever you paid for it would be your technical profit, right? Okay. Um, so first thing you want to realize here when you look at all of these binaries as a newbie, okay, and you want to understand what are they all about, why are there so many different ones, what I always tell people is, and, you know, I've been doing a lot of advanced trainings this week over at Apex as well on, on binaries and even some of the advanced you know, traders, I always remind them of this. When you look at this strike ladder, the easiest thing to do is to draw a line in it, all right? Where is the Nadex indicative market price right now? 59.58, okay? Notice this strike price right here, 59.58. So when the strike price is right at the same as the market price, that binary is gonna be priced approximately around $50. Okay, you know, when you average out the buy and sell side, it's going to be right around 50 bucks. Well, why is that? Well, what is a binary contract? All a binary contract is, is a statement that says the U.S. Tech 100 will expire greater than 59.58 by 3 p.m. Either that will happen or will not happen. It's either a yes or a no, right? Either it will expire above it, if I think it's going to expire above it and I buy, or if I think it statement's false and it's fire below it, I would sell, okay? But since the strike price and the market price are right close to each other, it's kind of right in the middle, right? It's still kind of 50-50. Will the market go up and it expires being worth 100 or will it go down and it expires being worth zero? And the difference can be one tick, right? One point, one tick. So. When the strike price and the binary price are right about the same, it's kind of right in the middle because it's kind of still on the fence. Does that make sense? If it can expire being worth zero or 100, and we don't know right now where it's going to go, it's kind of right in the middle. It's priced around 50, okay? You see some of these here that are priced closer to 100, okay? These are called in the money binaries because what is the statement saying? The statement says the U.S. Tech 100 will expire greater than 59.46. Well, it's already at 59.58. It's already greater than. The statement's already true. So the probability is much higher. That's why it's priced closer to 100. Makes sense? When it's right on the fence in the middle, it's priced at 50. When the statement's already happening, it's getting priced and valued closer to 100. All right, below this 50, okay, so if we draw that imaginary line right here, saying that's where the market is, this is kind of the, you know, 50-50 range as it were, just from a pricing standpoint. These are priced higher on the buy side, closer to 100, because they're already true. 
These are priced lower heading down towards zero. For example, this one way up here, it's only priced at $9. Well, why is it priced so cheap? Well, what is it saying? That the US Tech 100 will expire greater than 59.82 at 3 p.m. Where's the market at right now? 59.62, it's 20 points behind, right? So for this binary to expire in the money, what would have to happen? Well, between now and 3 p.m., the market has to go all the way up and go above 59.82, okay? So that's a lot less likely to happen. There's a lower probability of that happening than there is for one of these down here to expire in the money still, correct? Okay, so does that make sense why it's priced lower towards zero? It's a lower probability, right? Okay. All right, so those are called out of the money binaries, okay, when they're out of the money. These are already in the money, and if they stay in the money between now and expiration, they'll expire profitable. These are out of the money. The market would have to move way up for these to be profitable, for these to expire in the money. Now, what if the market moved up between now and 3 p.m. and it was moving up quite a bit, okay? Let's just, I wanna teach you something real quick about the, the strike ladder here, okay? Right now, where is the closest at the money binary? The market's at 59.64. Right here, we've got 59.62 and 66. So it's kind of right in between these two, isn't it? Right? Okay. Well, let's just look at this one right here. If I bought this binary, okay, notice how far apart are these strikes? 70, 66, 62, 50. They're four points apart, correct? Let's say I bought this one, okay? And so if I bought this one, okay? And the market went up four points from where it is right now. Where do you think this binary approximately would be valued at? Well, currently, Where's the one valued at right now that's four points above? Does that make sense? See how these are four points apart, right? And see the difference in the pricing when they're four points apart. So if I bought this one and the market went up four points, this one would end up priced about where this one is right now. And this one would end up priced where this one is right now. Does that make sense when you look four down or four up? So on the buy side, if I buy here and the market goes up four points, I mean, I'm, yes, I'm going down here, but it's, it's now four points more in the money or towards being in the money. So if I buy right here, the market goes up four points, I should be able to sell it for 39, correct? Approximately. If I buy right here and it goes up eight points, I should be able to sell it for 49. If I buy here and it goes up 12 points, I should be able to sell it for what? 61. Does that make sense? How you cross them or do you do the opposite on a sell? Understood? Okay. So right now the market has to go, like if I were to buy, you know, this one right here for $23, the market would have to go from 59.62 all the way up to 74. Okay, and then go above 74 and stay there for this one to expire in the money, being worth $100, correct? Everybody follow me there and agree? Okay, but, you know, that's for it to expire being worth 100. But if I bought, you know, one of these here and the market is moving up and moving up and moving up and moving up, as the market's moving in my direction, 
my value is slowly going up towards that hundred dollars, correct? So I could either choose to buy one of these and hold it till expiration, okay? But what happens, let's just take for example, just for example sake, this one right here, where's the strike? 59.74, okay? Let's look at a chart, all right? And let me add one thing on here. Let's do current price, okay? All right, so the market's right here. I could buy that strike way up here at 59.74, right? Okay, what can I buy that at right now? About $21. Okay, this is just as an example's sake. Okay, actually I wanna do something different. Let's look at this one. This one at 59.70. I can buy it for about 30 bucks, right? So 59.70, okay? Everybody see that visually on the chart? So the market's right here. I'm buying this strike right here. So let's say the market starts going up, okay? I bought it at 30. If the market gets all the way up to here, and we're not we're not at expiration time yet, we still got some time to expiration. What approximately will it be worth when the market price reaches up here and is the same as my strike price? What do we know about uh, binaries valued at when the strike price and the market price are about the same? $50, right? That's an at the money binary where the market and the strike are right about the same. And then let's say that the market keeps going up a little bit. And then now it's worth 60 and now it's worth 70. Maybe it gets worth about 80, right? Because the more it goes up, kind of go, you know, through here, the more valuable it gets, correct? And then all the way to expiration is 100 bucks. Everybody got that? So it comes up here, it's worth 50, then it's worth 60, then it's worth 70. And then what does the market do? Because what can the, what does the market do a lot of times in a trend? Or just in general, it's coming up, up, up. What if it did exactly what it did back here? All right, we're going up, we're at 430 and 40, now we're at 50, now it's worth 60, now it's worth 70. And then right before expiration, it comes back down and expires right here. How much is it worth then if it expired right here? At expiration, zero. So if we know that that can happen in the market, right, we know it could pull back. What are some possible good things for us to do? Well, we can hold till expiration. Um, one of the great things about Nadex is you can also exit early and take profit early, right? Okay. So, or let's talk about a couple other things. What if we know that we bought it at 30? Market's going up, 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 up. Now when it's here, it's worth how much? 50, right? Then it comes up here and it's worth 60 and 70 and 80. And we say, all right, I could hold this to expiration and try to get the full 100, but I don't know if the market's gonna come back down. What is one thing you could do if you're up here and you're now up, you know, worth about 75 bucks and you do see the market coming down and it comes all the way down to right here to your strike, you could say, I'm going to get out now as like a worst case, right? Because you know it's going to be worth around 50. You paid 30 for it. Well, hey, I didn't get to take it all the way to the 100, but I'd rather get out with a $20 profit then for it to expire below and I lose $30, right? Don't look at it as, well, that's only a $20 profit. 
you, you got to look at it as that's fifty dollars in your account as opposed to thirty being taken out of your account. You know what I mean? You're up twenty instead of down thirty, so it's a fifty dollar difference, right? So why would you utilize an out of the money binary when you could say, well, I could just buy down a $75 one down here and I don't have to worry about, you know, if it comes up and comes down, I've got a lot of protection down here. Absolutely you can, right? And there's strategies for that. What we're talking about today is out of the money binaries. So everybody understand when you get an out of the money binary that's a lower risk, you're putting yourself far away from the market and you've got to have movement. If I buy this binary right here for 30 bucks and as the market goes up, it's going to go up in value. But if I buy this for 30 bucks and the market suddenly just decides to do this right here. And it's just kind of doing that. And while it's doing that, we're getting closer and closer to the expiration time. Is this binary value of $30 going to go up the closer we get to expiration and the market's not moving? Or is that binary value going to start going this way? Right. It's going to go the other way. So what do we know that when it comes to out of the money binaries, what do we know that we like about them? They're lower risk, low investment with a potential high reward, but the market has to move in your direction in enough time for you to be right before expiration. And we only want to use them when. Do we want to use them in choppy markets? Do we want to use them in slow, not very, you know, when markets aren't really moving? No, we want to use them when we're expecting a good move. When we've got a good setup and we're expecting a good move up in the market, right? If we see the market, does that make sense? Everybody, I know some of you guys are very familiar with binaries, but we've got to quite a few people on here. For any of you newbies, does that make sense? Uh, you only want to use those when you're expecting a good move to get some value out of them. If I'm seeing the market doing this, I probably don't want to get something way out here, right? Okay. I want to only use them when I'm expecting a good move. Everybody follow me there. Any questions? at all on that basic part right there. I know you got it, Randall and Mike. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Perfect. All right. Um, Sydney, but sometimes when you expect a good move, a choppy market can come after. Absolutely. You're absolutely right, Sydney. We never know exactly what the market's going to do, do we? Okay. No matter what strategy or system we have, no matter what the best plans we have, all that we can control is when we enter the market and when we exit the market. We can't control what the market does, right? Okay. So you first of all have to have, you know, so Sydney says, well, then how do you know when to buy one? Well, you have to know your strategy and system. You have to, you know, be able to read the market. You have to be able to know, okay, my strategy, my system, my indicators, this system tells me and sets me up when these potential big moves are coming. Okay. Um, you have to have a strategy and system. If you were on, uh, I think, last week's webinar, maybe it was the week before, I actually did a webinar about what? About this right here, didn't I? About how a lot of people hate choppy markets and how we love them. Because what we do is we look for these choppy times because what is the market doing when it's chopping? It's building. It's fighting. Which way are we going to go? We're building up orders. We're building up contracts to do what? Boom, take off. We're looking for those kind of setups. And we have, you know, strategies and indicators that tell us what direction the market's going to jump out. Okay. In fact, if any of you guys want to see, I mean, you guys 
I, I couldn't have timed this better. I mean, this is a live chart. I didn't know this was going to happen. You guys see this, right? You see this choppiness? And then what does the market do? It breaks out. So if I was watching this live and this set up for me, and I got an out-of-the-money binary down here for about $30 risk, I, I might have made some decent money on that. Can you, can you see that, Sydney? And that example right there? If you want to see exactly how we do that, like you see that, go where I was showing you earlier, okay, and go to nadex.com, okay, and right here, Learning Center Webinar Archive, go to Filter by Presenter, Apex Investing, uh, right there, Trading Binary, Trading Key Levels with Nadex Binaries. All right, and I showed you in there how we use some of our proprietary indicators at those levels when we see CHOP and what we're looking for in volume to help us make some directional decisions. It's literally that setup right there that we see on the chart right now that I covered last week, okay? Um, Sydney says, I trade breakouts on Nadex, but sometimes it doesn't get to my strike and it gets there after expiration. Sydney, were you on this webinar? Did you see this webinar I did last week or a couple weeks ago, trading key levels with Nadex binaries? I literally talked about the exact thing you're, you're saying right there. Like any of you that were on that webinar can raise your hand and say, yes, we literally covered it. And Sydney, I, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you here's what you see happen, okay, is you see a breakout and you see it, you see chop and then you see a breakout. The market comes down in your direction, right? You're loving life. You're seeing your P&L go up, right? Right? And then what happens? Man, I'm going good. This right here. Oh, it made a pullback. Bam. Got me right around expiration. Then the market kept going in my direction. Right, Sydney? That's exactly what happens, isn't it? I cover that to a T in that webinar and show you some ways to help you avoid that. Okay? So definitely go check that out. Okay, you'll, you'll love it. If you're if you're a breakout trader and that's what's happening to you, literally go watch that webinar as soon as you can. Guys, you that were on it, right? Can you back me up on that? I literally covered that. And two or three ways to help you stay away from that happening. Okay? So check it out, Sydney. You'll you'll love that. So when we're expecting moves. Okay, and I could have traded that several different ways, right, Sydney? If I said, saw this breakout and knew it was going south, what, what could I have done? Well, let me just remove all objects here. We're getting a little off track, but this will help set up for the rest of the webinar here. If I'm seeing this, okay, and seeing that chop, and I see the breakout, and my volume indicators, my strength indicators, everything I cover, um, in last week's webinar, if I'm seeing that and I feel like the, you know, my bias is the market's going short, right? Here's the great thing about Nadex, okay? Sydney, you just said, I'll trade that breakout, but it doesn't hit my strike. It takes me out. And then after that expiration, then it hits my strike. Well, what's the first thing that you could do? Okay, let's kind of talk about this. Right now, it's 1.27 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, let's just say, for example, that this setup was happening right now, Sydney. Okay, let's just say. And let's say that right now happened to be right here at this breakout point of the chop box. And... Our indicators showed us there was some volume and pressure behind it, so we feel pretty good about it breaking to the south, right, to go down. And let's say that this was happening live right now. Let's say that all we're seeing on the chart is that, right? Okay. Or one bar in, right? I can't. 
there we go, something like that, right? Let's say that we could see that, and it's 1.28 p.m. So I pull up the Nadex platform, okay, and I don't want to look at the 2 o'clock expiration. We've got about 28 minutes to go, and I say, okay, well, I could get this one right here for about $23, right? Um, Right now, I could buy it for you know 24 bucks, uh, risk 24, and I could make 76. We all love that, right, Sydney? We like that. That's a nice risk to reward. Okay. Or let me ask you this, Sydney. What what do you normally? What prices do you normally buy at when you talk about it not hitting? Do you buy in the 20s or do you go like even lower, like 15? Where do you normally like these trade setups? Okay, there we go. 30 to 45, right? So let's say that we were looking at 2 o'clock here, okay? Well, I've got a $21 and I've got a $45. So I can get strikes from like 71 to 67, somewhere in there, okay? Well, the 67 is right around 45, okay? I personally, I really like mine personally to be in the 30s, okay? But, you know, let's say I was going to do something like this one here, the 67, okay? Um, let's look. Or let's look at the 71 and the 67, okay? Let's look at both options. So 71 and 67, where would that be? That would be um, – hold on. Where were those prices again? 71 and 67 okay oh I'm sorry we're looking to sell that's why I'm <laughs> that's only wait a minute this doesn't make sense we need to look at the sell side okay so here's the perfect sell or here's the perfect ones to look at on the sell side we've got a 46 a 72 and an 88 right all right so perfect we actually have some available I was worried we wouldn't but we do have some so Let's just look, for example, at this one right here, the 63, okay? So I can sell it, and I risk about 25 bucks to potentially make 75, right? Okay, where's the strike at? 59.63. So I'm saying 59.63 is where? Right about here okay oh the reason these aren't working right is because the markets way down here that's why these prices don't make sense but my point is this let's just say that I could get a strike right here and sell it for about a $30 risk okay you follow me let's say that this was live and I could sell about a $30 risk you know, here or probably even a little further down, right, is where it would be. Does that make sense, guys? So I get that strike, and market comes down. I'm feeling good. Feel, oh, wait a minute. Oh, now I'm feeling Oh, wait a minute. And right about expiration time, because what's coming up here, the 1 o'clock, uh-oh, uh-oh. At 1 o'clock, it expired about right here. You see, I entered the trade here about 12.30, right? So I had about 30 minutes till expiration. Okay. Well, first of all, if you've only got like 10 or 15 minutes to expiration, don't get that one. Give yourself the extra hour. Does that, does that make sense, guys? This this is kind of a bad example to use because we're not live. But that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't give enough time to be right. All right? You don't want to get one of those strikes that are way down there when you've only got 10 or 15 minutes left. Does that make sense, Sydney? You want to – because what do you – what happens almost every single time? Okay? And I, I, I've done a lot of webinars on this over at Apex recently about these breakout trades. And those of you that are Apex traders on here, answer my question. What happens almost every time we get a breakout? Randall? 
Mike? Yeah, a pullback. We, we expect a pullback. We expect a retrace, right? Well, we expect a pullback. And then it keeps going. Does that make sense, Sydney? So if you're a breakout trader, just, just step back for a minute. Because there's, there's a couple things we teach here. First of all, I teach, hey, okay, who just said this? Marion, right? What do we know? And Sydney, let me ask you this. Sydney, if you're a breakout trader, what's the biggest thing that you always come up against with breakout trades? Fake breaks in the wrong direction, right, Sydney? It's breaking. It'll do a little fake on you and be like, ha, gotcha. Go the other way, right? And you think, man, they're all out to get me. They knew I was going that way. <laughs> right, Sydney? <laughs> but we know that's not the case. But that's the biggest problem that breakout traders face. Is it not, Sydney? Is the fake breaks. But instead of letting it break and waiting it for a confirmation to go further, we don't want to do that because we feel like we missed half the move, right? So we want to get in as right at the beginning of the break, yeah? And then what does it do sometimes? Fakes us out, goes the other way. Okay, so you know that's problem A with breakout trading, right, Sydney? Okay, I was totally going another direction with this webinar, but you set me up here, Sydney. This is good for you guys to see this because it's all about out of the money binaries. No, don't be, don't be sorry. This is perfect. So you know that's problem A with breakout trades is the fake breaks correct and you went the wrong direction what's problem B Sydney it's how you started this whole conversation is I went the right way but it did not hit my strike before expiration or it pulled back against me before expiration then after expiration it goes my way right Sydney that's the that's problem B which is the problem you brought up here and like I said, I'm willing to bet you that most of the time it starts to go your direction and you start to be profitable for a little bit, right? Your binary starts to grow in profit, then it pulls back against you, expiration comes and you, you had a loss, then it goes your way, right? Is that what happens most of the time, Sydney? And I'm addressing Sydney here because she he or she, I'm sorry, he or she asked that question, but this goes to all of you. I'm sure you've all seen this, right? So what is something that you could do, Sydney, if you know that those are your two biggest problems? Is one, getting caught in the fake break. What could you do? Don't take it on the break. Let it go. Make sure it's not a fake break. And then what? When it comes back and retraces, and oftentimes it will retrace, like there's two retraces here. It broke, then what did it do? It retraced all the way back up to where? To the breakout line. See it, Sydney? And then it went down. And it even gave you a second pullback, where to? Right to the same break point. Then went on down. So what's the one thing you could do to stop problem a of the fake breakouts well first of all I have a good strategy or system that shows you where the fake ones are and I actually show you that in that previous webinar but the other thing you could do is let it break don't rush to enter make sure it's not a fake break let it pull back and then continue and say all right now I'm gonna get in so that will help you with problem a right of the fake breaks what's the other thing you could do of well, as soon as it broke, I got my binary right here, and then it pulled back against me, knocked me out, and then it went. Well, again, wait for that pullback or that second pull, you know, wait for the pullback to get in. Okay? And then make sure with an out of the money binary that you're giving yourself enough time to be right. What I teach a lot is 
well, you guys know this, 20 minutes to an hour. I don't like to do out of the money binaries with less than 20 minutes, okay? I like to have more time than that to, to do what? what? What do we know the market does? From here, this is a low point, right? And where's the high point on this chart? Here. So the market went from what? 59.44 to 59.80. So the market moved 36 points, right? Remember before you got into trading, before you started learn, tr learning trading, and you'd hear those guys on the news, the Dow Jones went up 200 points today. In your head, what were you thinking? The Dow Jones went up at 200 points today. It opened here and it went straight up 200 points and it closed there, right? That, that's what you think when you don't know anything about trading. Oh, well, it opened up and the market rallied today. We had a strong day on Wall Street. It opened here and closed here. That's what you see in your head, right? Is Boom, an arrow all the way up. But what do we know that, I mean, now, yeah, we've all seen the market shoot up, but what do we know happens most of the time in a trend? This number right here, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? We all know that. Can everybody agree that that's what you normally see in a trend? Look at this trend. Man, the market went from here to there. That was a nice, strong trend, wasn't it? But what did it do? Up, pull back, up, pull back, up, pull back. Okay, so I think the market's going to go up. My bias is long. My strategy or system tells me long. But what do I know is going to happen, even if I think it's going to be a good, big move? I know there's going to be pullbacks, right? So if I want to, if I'm trading an in the money binary and I'm buying down here, you know, like goes up, pulls back, goes up, and I'm buying down here, I'm not as worried about little pullbacks, am I? I just want to stay above here. But if I'm buying an out of the money binary somewhere, right? Okay. I want to account for those little pullbacks because I don't want to be right going, yep, going up, pull back, going up, pull back. Man, I'm doing good. Man, I'm doing good. Man, I've called this one right. Oh, man, I'm way over. I'm perfect. And there's expiration. Bam. And then it keeps going. Oh, come on. Right? <laughs> Sydney, right? It's like, oh, come on, man. So, Give yourself enough time to be right. I'm not saying go to the end of the day or end of the week, okay? But don't give yourself just 15, 20 minutes. Like, give yourself time to be right. Those two things right there will turn around most of your issues, or those three things will turn around most of your issues without the money binaries. First and foremost, you got to have the right, a good strategy and system that can call those trades, call those breakouts, call those powerful levels, those chop areas, the breakouts of chop, right? And the volume direction. So first of all, you got to have that. Otherwise, you're just guessing and pressing buttons. For two, give yourself enough time to be right. To avoid the it, it I've done like I said a lot of webinars recently and we all sit here and talk about well yeah we know duh why is this guy on this webinar why am I listening to this guy on this webinar talk about elementary stuff why is he sitting there talking about how the markets don't trend straight up they go up and they pull back and they go up and they pull back he's talking elementary level I know this we all know this. We all know that's what the market does. Why am I wasting my time listening to you? Okay, take a deep breath, step back, and think about what you do. And Sydney, I'm not picking on you, okay? I picked on a lot of people the other day. Well, we know that. We know the market does that. Okay, what else do you know after a breakout that almost always happens? 
Well, yeah, we know it does a pullback. Hello. Okay, and what are you trading? Out of the money binaries with 10 minutes to go to expiration. And I wonder why I get hit all the time. Really? Think about it for a minute. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a light bulb. Like, oh, duh. Like, I know that happens. I know it's coming. I just walked out in front of traffic and let it hit me. And then I want to complain that I got hit. And I wonder why. Right? So some of this seems very elementary. But then sometimes it's like, a oh, yeah, duh. I've got to give it more time. Or i got to wait for the pullback and then go with it. If I'm sitting there going, I trade those breakouts, and I'm not picking on you, Sydney. Just you set this up perfectly. What's the first thing that started this whole conversation you said, Sydney, was I get in. It doesn't hit my strike. It pulls back. Then after expiration, it goes the right way. You, right? Oh, okay. I see that happen all the time. So then what do I need to learn from that is let me expect that to happen the next time. How do I account for it? Two ways. Wait for the pullback to happen so you don't get caught in it. Then go. Because if you see it go after expiration, for one, wait for the pullback. For two, get the next expiration out. Right? So if you see that happen in so many times, just account for it. Okay, I'll stop picking on you. I'm not picking on you, Sydney. Like, that was great. I think that helps a lot. Did that help anyone else? To like, I know some of you that have been on with some of our other webinars. I've talked about this a lot lately. But it's so key with out-of-the-money trades. Right? Henry, that makes sense too, right? Now, what's the other thing that does happen with out-of-the-money binaries? Well, I got this one down here for a $30 risk. It broke out. It was coming. It was coming. Oh, it pulled against me. But, hey, it went my direction. It went my direction. Man, look, it went way down here. So what do we know? If I sold this one for $30 risk, so I sold it at 70 when the market got down here to it, how much was it worth? When the market was right here at my strike, about 50. When it kept going and got all the way down here, it was probably worth about what? 75, 80 bucks, right? Yeah. And then what? Comes up, comes up, comes up. Look at the time. Where was that bar right there? 13.05. So 1 o'clock was probably about right here. It probably came back up just a few ticks above and expired worth how much? Zero. We've all seen that happen, right? So with out-of-the-money binaries, you can hold them till expiration. That's an option. Okay. Um, if you see yourself way up at 70, 80 bucks and you're liking it, and then it comes back against you and hits your strike price, you could exit for how much? About 50, right? And just say, hey, I just want to lock in what I've got. So I'd rather take 20 than zero, right? The way that we normally trade them, or I normally trade them, is I like to go for a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, okay, with out of the money binaries. All right. So if I'm risking 30, I want to make 30. Okay. Um, so I'm normally looking for between 30 and 45 dollars. And as soon as I place my order, I'm setting a take profit order. Does anyone on this webinar, please raise your hand, does anyone not know how to take a how to place a take profit order? Does everyone know how to place a take profit order on the Nadex platform? 
or and does everybody know what I mean when I say that if you don't please tell me I'm glad to show you here it's very very important that you know how to okay so let's just use a basic example here all right so what do we see right here we have open positions right and we have working orders okay so this is a demo this is a demo platform this is not a trade recommendation I'm not calling out a trade this is strictly for educational purposes to show you entering and exiting orders all right everybody understand that let's just say for example that I went in and I bought this binary right here okay I bought one and I say place order where is that order showing up right now it's in open positions right because it's open it's active I place that order this is an open active trade everybody see that shows the contract I bought the time left to expiration when it expires when I entered the trade the average price I bought it for 26.25 I also know it's a bought contract because it says plus one I bought it right okay and right here I see my live current profit and loss what is this profit and loss number based off of well what does it say it says average price I bought it for 26.25 the current market price meaning what I could sell it for right now is what 1850 so what's that difference 775 or eight now eight, it, it changes everybody see that Sydney you see that so look at this contract that I bought 5974 where is it up here 5974 so let's look at the current prices here's the buy side for that contract here's the sell side for that contract you see that see that sell side right there what does this say 1950 1950 19, 19 18. those numbers are the same does that make sense so if I buy this contract I can hold it to expiration but if I want to get out of this contract early before expiration if I bought the contract what do I have to do to get out of the contract I have to sell it so if I bought this contract this 74 contract and I want to sell it I can sell it for whatever the current going bid price is that makes sense for anybody that might be new that, that you understand that and that's what the price is showing here Henry says that was awesome I'm a newbie okay great Henry this does that make a lot of this does that make the Nadex platform a lot more clear now and what all these numbers are all about okay that makes sense oh yeah okay so let's just use another example here okay Henry let's, let's use a total different scenario let's say that I open this contract and I want to sell this one okay I want to sell this one okay so I sold it right it's now in my open positions and notice the one I sold is marked what negative one the one I bought was marked plus one that helps me confirm which direction I was going right okay where's that contract 5958 I sold it for 81.75 so now don't get confused and caught up in wait a minute how do you sell something that you don't own okay don't get caught up in that it's going one direction or the other okay that makes sense Henry like some people say okay I understand I you bought something and to get out of it you got to sell it but how do you sell something first well don't think about it think about you're just choosing a direction up or down and whatever direction you go to get out of it early you got to go the other direction 
okay? Or, or think of it as, yes, you, you borrowed it from, from the market maker. He's like, here, you know, I'll let you borrow my contract and sell it for this price. All right, I'll sell it to you for that price. Whatever you have to buy it back for later, that's your business, but you owe me this much, okay? Don't get caught up in the buy and sell. But if I want to get out early of a contract I sold, the way I get out early is to what? Buy it back, as it were, right? So this contract, the 5958, what can I buy back for right now? 85. 86.25, see it, the same numbers. Make sense? Okay. So, well, thank you, Henry, I appreciate that. One more, one more little test here. Let's say that for whatever reason, I like this strike price right here, okay? I like 59.66. Where can I buy it at right now? About 49, 48, right? Well, let's say for whatever reason, I don't want to buy this. Let's say that maybe I'm expecting the market to go up and then make a retrace, okay? Let's, let's just say this is just random, okay? Let's say that, okay, back here I was watching the market and I think the market's gonna go down. But I think after the market goes down, it'll pull up and make a retrace. So I wanna, I wanna sell, or okay, let's say right here, I'm thinking the market's gonna go up. But I don't wanna buy at a high price. So I want to buy when it's down here on one of these retraces. That way I buy low and then let it go on up, okay? Let's say that you had a system like that. I'm not giving you a recommendation or teaching that, but just say that for example. Okay, Henry, follow me. So I like this strike price, but I don't want to buy it right now at 50. Okay. I don't want to buy it. Um, I don't want to buy it until it goes down to... 30 bucks. So I enter 30 and I say place order. Okay. Did, did that order execute? Is it open in my open positions right here? No. Right. You see that Henry? It's not in here. Where is it? It's down here in what? Working orders. Because it's working. It's sitting there ready to go. It's not going to fire off and enter my active open positions until the price gets down to $30. Because right now it's up, you know, at, um, where is it? At 50, 53. So this mark, this, this working limit order is not going to, fire off until the price gets down to the level that I said. Everybody follow me there? Those others, I did a market order and I entered right away, right? And they went in right away. So that's a working limit order. Make sense? Okay. If I decide I don't want that order anymore, all I do is click it right there. It opens up the ticket. And I can just say delete remainder and it's gone. See that? Eh, I don't want that order anymore. Okay. So let's say, for example, that I took this trade and I risked about 30 bucks. And what I want to do is I want to, I don't want to hold to expiration. I don't want to be greedy and try to get every penny I can and then have the market go against me and I'm at zero. I just want to go for a one-to-one risk-reward ratio. 
Okay, everybody understand what that means? One to one risk reward. Okay, meaning, do I want to risk ninety dollars to potentially make ten? That's not a good risk to reward, is it? Right, Henry? What if I lost one trade and I lost ninety dollars? How many trades would I have to be profitable on to make up for my one loss and just to get back to break even, right? If I lose one for 90 bucks and then I profit on nine, nine times I profit 10 bucks, then I've made back my 90, but it took me 10 trades and now I'm what? Break even. That's not probably the best strategy to go with in general, right? But if I can risk $30 to make $30, then that's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? Make sense? If I can have a one-to-one, -one, just think about some numbers for a minute. If I can have a one-to-one risk-reward ratio, and I'm only right half the time. I'm only right 50% of the time. I only have profitable trades 50% of the time. Where, where am I at profit-wise? I'm break even, right? Everybody follow, you, follow me there? If I can risk 30 to make 30, so half the time I lose 30, half the time I make 30, I'm break even, okay? So if I can have a one-to-one -one ratio, risk 30 to make 30, but then find and utilize a good strategy and system where I can be profitable 75% of the time, 70 or 80% of the time, then that flips me over the, the edge of being break even to being pretty good, right? Make sense? Simple math. Yeah? So... One strategy I could do is if I'm going to take a trade like this, for example, and I'm going to risk 30 to make 30, okay, or, or whatever it is, okay? So what did I buy this one for right here? $26.25, right? What is $26.25 times 2? It's $52.50, right? Let's just call it 53 bucks. Everybody follow me? So I'm risking 26, and then I, I want to make 26, right? So let's just call it $53. So check this out. This order is already in here in the open positions, and it's marked plus one. So I bought it, right? If I want to get out of it early, what do I have to do on a bought contract? I have to sell it. Okay? So check this out, Henry. If I click this order, it automatically opens a ticket on its own in the Nadex platform, and that ticket's already marked what? Sell. Because that's the only thing I can do with it, right? To get out of it. So, I bought it at $26.25. I want to double my money. So, where am I approximately getting out at, Henry? We called it 53, right? Well, it's not at $53 right now, right? It's at seven. <laughs> but I don't want it to sell until 53 because I want to double my money. So, I click it, it opens it up, say in sell. And it already has a sell price in there, which is the current sell price when I open the ticket. But I don't want to sell it for that, do I? I want to sell it for what? Delete, delete, delete. 53. Place order. Where did that order go? It's in working orders. Say in what? Sell me it when I get to 53. So what did I just do there? I placed a 
take profit order. Does that make sense? Right? You see that? So I bought it. So I've got my trade set up. Okay, it broke out. I waited for the pullback. I, you know, I sold and risked. Well, let's just, as an example right here, I sold this one at 81.75. So how much did I risk there? What's the difference between $100 and $81.75? So I risked $18. Let's just call it 20 bucks. And I wanna make 20 bucks. So where do I have to, to buy this one back at? Let's just say $60, right? That makes sense? So I'm gonna click it. It opens up where what's already marked, buy. I wanna buy it back when it gets down to $60. Place order, boom, it's in working orders. So my trade setup right here, it market broke out, it pulled back, I sold down here. It's already set in there to, I sold around, you know, $20 risk. When it gets down here and it's made me 20 bucks, boom, it gets me out. One to one ratio. And I'm not sitting there having to watch every second of it and press a button. It, it's set, isn't it? It's set. Okay. So guys, I got a little off track there of the path I was wanting to go with you, but this got home to you what I'm trying to explain to you. With out of the money binaries, only take them when you're expecting a big move, when you're expecting to be able to profit from the move. You don't always have to hold them till expiration. You can exit early. Be aware of your market conditions and surroundings. Be aware that that pullback is going to happen and prepare for it. Either wait for it to happen and then get in or just get a further expiration to take account for those, right? Figure what strategy you want to go with, get your order in there, get your take profit order, and you're set. If that starts going in your direction, going in your direction, the value gets up there and hits that value, boom, it closes you out. The money you had to put on hold to buy or sell the contract goes back in your account, and so does the profit, minus fees, and you move on to the next one. Okay? So, is that was that helpful at all with trading out of the money binaries, give yourself enough time to be right, make good use of that movement, have a good risk to reward ratio, okay? So, all right guys, this webinar was recorded and all webinar recordings, you can uh, again, hop on over to nadex.com, go right here to Learning Center, under webinars, show you where to get registered for the new ones upcoming, or go to webinar archives, Find us right here under Apex Investing Institute. And um, you can go back and watch any of these different webinars here that you might have missed from the past, talking about different strategies, different systems, and so on. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, you know, if you have any other questions as well, hop on over and visit us over at apexinvesting.com. We have tons of free education over there and different strategies and systems and, you know, some news calendars and scanners, uh, a lot of free education. And, you know, any questions you have, um, feel free. We are totally here to, uh, here to help. Okay. Um, all right, guys, I appreciate you taking the time here. I hope this was helpful for you. Check out these strategies, test them in demo. Okay, and uh, get a handle on them, all right? And um, once you get a handle on them in your demo account, then you can start switching over to live, and um, we're here to help. So, guys, once again, I give Nadex super props for all of the uh, free education and free demo accounts they do. Make sure to take advantage of stuff like this, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much, and we will see you on the next webinar. Take care. Have a great one. Thank you.